Today was supposed to be a shop day. The almond trees say that it's spring, but the weather kind of tells a different story. I got a phone call last night saying that cows were out at the winter pasture and they got them back in, but still that means we need to go inspect the fence, see if we can figure out where they escaped. And I got to try to fix that today so that hopefully it doesn't happen again because the thing about cows is once they get in a habit of breaking out in a certain spot on the fence, it's almost impossible to make them stop. So I know we got that to do. I got to run hay to the steers at the steer pasture and whatever else pops up today. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. First, I guess we'll count them, make sure they're all here. All right, so everybody's here, that's a good sign. My cow that I think is close to giving birth is right here in the middle of the group, so that's not happening yet. Let's go see if we can find this hole. So the cows were out on the driveway over here and there's like no fence here. What the heck? I'm seeing some tracks. So it might be hard to tell on the GoPro, but there's, there's hoof tracks right here. And I'm, I'm pretty certain that's must have been where she got out. There's another hoof there. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a problem right there. The good thing is that if they do get out here, there's not really a whole lot, or they can't get too far because you got the slough right here is blocking them. So it pretty much keeps them on the driveway down this direction for quite a ways, and then down that direction as well. So. The other good thing is because of the way the fence is just non-existent here, this wasn't a cow that was really pushing on a fence or, you know, trying to break out. She just found a hole. So hopefully if we just can block this off, it'll, it'll solve the problem. I think I am going to use my hot wire idea. This is a pretty major repair and we've got a lot of brush and stuff that needs to be moved before we can really do it right. So. A temporary hot wire will fix this problem and I think we'll just do that before we go to the steer pasture because already the cows are starting to migrate this way and be just my luck that they'll get out again. Okay fast forward I got the feed wagon dropped off at the ranch stopped at the house and got everything that I'm gonna need to set up this hot wire so Let's go do it. Let's hope that the cows haven't escaped in that time. I guess if they have, then we'll deal with that too. Well, there's a big pile of them standing there where the feed wagon was eating what's left on the ground. So they're packed too close together to try to count them, but I'm gonna assume that they're all there. The trouble of it now is I think they've seen this round bale I've got in the back of the truck and wherever I park over here, it won't surprise me if they swarm this truck and we have to end up moving it. You guys figured it out, huh? All right. Well, me and Callie tried scaring them back. We'll see how, how long they stay at bay. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to get a T-post driver too. Well, we got 7,000 volts on that wire. I think that'll be 
plenty to deter them from going through there. But funny story, as I was sitting here keeping cows away from this hay bale, hey, Callie, you're gonna get kicked right there. You don't have the sense that a border collie does. As I was working on this little hot fence, I actually noticed the cow that got out yesterday went over and jumped the cattle guard and got out over there. So I'm wondering if she even got out here. It looks like somebody has, and this was a big hole that needed to be fixed anyway, but it looks like she's gonna have to go back to the ranch because if she's a cattle guard jumper, she can't stay here. But that's not something I can deal with right this second. I gotta go get this hay bale delivered to the steers. And if we've got time this afternoon, I will come back and get this cow. Well, we just rolled into the steer pasture and we're gonna drop off this round bale. But first, I kinda wanted to just take a look at these guys. I only see them once a week and hopefully it stays that way. That means we don't have to come out to address issues. But I think they look pretty good. I think S2 here is the star of the show. He, he by far looks the best to me. Um, but yeah, they all look good. So that's, I always like seeing that. A few of these guys are a little on the small side yet. Really all of them are. But by the time we get to our next harvest dates, I think, well, the next date is only for one of them. And at least one of these guys will be ready by then. Well, I don't know, you're kind of a stud too, aren't you? This S3 steer, he ain't bad either. None of them really stand very tall, but that's not that big of a deal. You want to look more at just their body. I'd say that black, white face and this guy here, probably the top of the class. All right, well, I just wanted to show you guys that. I'm going to drop this bale off. I don't think I'm going to film that just because I filmed it tons of times and it hasn't changed. It's the exact same process that you've seen before. It's the next day now. All the cows stayed in the winter pasture last night. I'm happy to report. Um, it seems like putting that hot wire up helped and then closing the gate on the cattle guard where the cow was jumping over is really probably what solved the problem. But as you can see, this uh, beautiful weather that we've got persists yet again today. So I'm gonna work in the shop. Over the next couple of days, we've got rain and wind in the forecast. And a lot of times that can mean power outages. And while that's very inconvenient for us, it can be deadly for these guys. I've got 13 or 14 uh, layer chicks here in the shop. And then we've got 50 meat bird chicks back at the ranch. And I just get to thinking like, man, if the power was to go out, how would we have heat lamps for all these chicks because they're still at a young age where they need them. I've got this predator generator here that usually we use when we go camping. That would be perfect for running a heat lamp. And I've also got another generator outside that's broken, but I do have the parts to fix it. What I've got here is this Briggs & Stratton generator. I bought this, ah, I don't know, years ago. It's pretty old, but I've never really used it that much, so it doesn't have that many hours on it. A couple years ago, I went to start this up and it wouldn't start, so I took the carburetor apart to clean it. And while I was cleaning it, I was uh, blowing some compressed air through a jet and something, I'm not even sure what, blew out of the carburetor. I heard it hit the wall in the shop and I never could find what it was and it just won't run without whatever that piece is. This generator sat in the yard here for a while and then finally one day it dawned on me that I should either get rid of it or make it run because it didn't make very good looking yard art. And I got to looking around online and found that a new carburetor, the entire carburetor for this thing, $14. And of course the idea here is that if I get the generator fixed and running, I will never need it. So there you go. That's what $14 will get you. Let's get this fuel line off of here first. Still hanging on. It looks like we've got 
a choke linkage. How does this come out? There. Okay, now I know how I got that out. They actually gave me several different choke lever assemblies that you can put on this carburetor. So it, it actually will work the same way that the old one did. Let's go ahead and change this choke lever. So the way I understand this, I'm just going to pull that out. I originally put the butterfly in backwards or upside down and when I was trying to pull it out it was kind of stuck. What ended up happening is I bent the butterfly off of the new carburetor but fortunately the butterfly from the old carburetor popped out pretty easily and they're exactly the same. So I just put the old butterfly in there which it's it's a brass part and this is, looks like galvanized steel so maybe the brass is better anyway. I don't know but that's what we're running with. It's always the things that you don't think are gonna be a battle that end up taking forever. We can just put this back together now. All right, well, let's try putting some gas in this thing and see if it'll fire. Well, that's another thing I can check off the list. As I'm filming this video, it's February 27th, I believe. And what that means for me is that it's time to start making multiple cow checks every day because calves are right around the corner. Did you have something to add? Although our calves aren't due to start being born until the middle of March, it is certainly not unheard of to get calves in the last part of February. I don't really expect to see anything out here today, but you know, that's why we got to check. Well, I don't see calves, but I do see cows where they're not supposed to be here in the yard. Somehow that gate got left open or they pushed it open, one of the two. Well, cows out is never what you want to find, but I gotta say I'm happy that I did find them before they all realized that that gate was open. Well, no calves yet, but I can tell by looking at a few of those cows that they're right around the corner. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.